Hey guys, welcome back to the CCLP5 submission series. We are on the Walls of CCLP3 content, which is going to last quite some time. I imagine this will be at least five episodes. I, I can't see it being anything less than that. And, um, yeah, these levels, I think, are arranged in the order they appeared in Walls of CCLP3. At least I think so. Um, yeah, so I guess let's just jump right into it with Lesson Zero. So, this was a level that I made out of the walls of, um, Air Pocket. And, um, it's gotten some good, some good, um attention uh, I think I think this little trap button puzzle it's not really a Sokoban but um, I think this this doohickey thing is what got a lot of a, what got a lot of notice yeah something like that Um, oh, I can't actually, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, some people that, the, some of the people that played Walls of CCLP3, they said that this should have been the first level instead of uh, Keep Out of Reach of Children, which was what the first level was in that set where I chose it to be. Uh, this this puzzle is the reason why I didn't make it level one. Just to uh, make that known, because it's, it's easy, but there's, there's a thought process to it. Okay, so we can click this. And the whole outside is invisible walls. And the the blue walls are, I think, where the, um, original chips were placed. And you used to be able to come out here via this way, but, um, with the submissions, I, I went ahead and removed all the secret hints. Uh, that only stated what what walls they used. So, um, yeah. I mean, some of them were kept in, but I just kind of, re I either just reworded it, or I just took out what the walls it used was from, if that makes sense. Okay, Nitro Network. This one uses um, Toolbox. And it's gotten some uh, some comments that uh, it was surprised that a narrow layout like this was used for a toggle wall maze. And I don't know, it's just... I think Toolbox was one of the... I'm trying to remember the design order of, the, of walls of CCLP3. I want to say Toolbox was used in the latter half, but before the 100s, I think. I don't remember for sure. But uh, yeah, the idea just kind of came to me, and at that point in the set, I kind of took notice that um, I didn't really have a easy toggle wall level, so I made this one, and it works, surprisingly. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's nothing super special, but I'm, I'm more happy with the fact that, that it, it's fit into this template.
so there was a uh, a question that was asked in the CCBBC earlier, well, yesterday, technically, but it was, uh, okay, let's get this set up properly. There we go. <laughs> There was a question that was asked in the server earlier today about, um, oh, Rural Graveyard. Let's go ahead and play this. Um, is it easier or harder to make a level out of a wall template? Or, no, sorry, not, not harder. Um, is it easier to make a level with a pre-existing template than it would be with an, an empty grid? And um, I guess to kind of elaborate my personal thoughts on it, um, it all, honestly, it kind of comes down to what kind of level you're aiming for. Um, for me, oh, uh, wall patterns can, uh, I find it a lot easier to make a level out of a wall pattern these days compared to an empty grid. Like I've made some, a little bit, I've made a few, but I have made some non walls of levels. And, but those ones I've made are pretty tough. Can you go to the bomb? Yes, you can. There we go. And I don't know, it just kind of depends on the level. I think someone said that, and I guess I'm just kind of repeating what they said, just in voice, <laughs> but it, it just kind of depends on the concept you go for. And honestly, walls of levels, they just, they add a lot of challenge. They really put your creative skills to the test and it's like, okay, what kind of what kind of neat concept can I do within this small workspace? Like this level, for example. Um, I remember when JB played it, he didn't like the level. And it kind of surprised me because I kind of would have, I, I kind of, I didn't really expect anything, but I, I would have thought just based off his play style and especially his design style from Walls of CCLP1, I would have thought he would have liked this level a lot because it's smaller. It's, you know, it, there was some block pushing and yeah, the block pushing comments were kind of hit and hit or miss, but I didn't think this one was that bad, even with a walker. And um, I think at the end of the day, I think what hit, what made that level disliked was just where it was placed. I should have placed it later in walls of CCLB3. I don't know why I put it at level 10, <laughs> but I did. Uh, but as you saw, I played it perfectly fine. Didn't die by a walker. Um, at least I don't think I did. But anywho, cardboard cutout is what uh, I made out of redoubled effort. This was an interesting template to use. And this puzzle is something. Um, I think there's a few different ways you can do this, actually. So I think the limit is six, I think. So that's three right off the bat. So four, five. Okay, cool. And this is where the hint used to be, but I, I just blocked it off. A little time key swapping section. Okay. I really like how I reused this section a second time. I think that's, I think it's pretty cool. 
That's an appearing wall. Okay. And a fairly simple silk band. Yeah, the outer aesthetic is supposed to resemble, you know, like the cutout lines, like on a cardboard box or something. You can cut out lines to fold it or something. That's what it was for, or that's what the aesthetic is supposed to be referencing. Okay. And this ending is pretty cool. That's card or yeah, cardboard cutout. Done. Now on to Cinder Block, which there's been plenty of levels with that title, but I think this is this might be the best one. Not to toot my own horn or anything. Um Yeah, I like that. Okay, so you have to go up here first. This part's not really clear, but um I like the fact that it uses all the pop-up walls. <laughs> so I just I, I felt like that was worth enforcing. Okay, so I want this block do this way. And this one was made out of um, niche or niche, however people want to call it. Okay, clone two more. And then I can collect this. So one of the hardest things about Walls of CCFB3 was how to utilize these long, narrow corridor paths. Because those were honestly probably one of the hardest parts about making walls of CCLP3. Was not directly throwing away the um, the templates. I mean, I threw away some of them. I, th I think every walls of set has thrown away at least a handful of templates. Um, okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, the cinder block was, I think it was one of the first ones I made for the set, actually. I, it was like, uh, I don't remember. I should have looked up the, the design order before I started playing. All right, hue and saturation. A lot of people really like this one, and it's, while I'm happy about it, it I can't help but be surprised about it. So this whole concept was uh, inspired by uh, Temple of No Key and Archie P1. And it's it's a pretty underutilized concept, I think. Uh, when I saw these those zigzaggy paths that were in dancing gliders, which is what this uses, um, especially these little nail setups, I kind of knew that I had to reference um, our, the temple no key level. Okay. So what do I do now? I go through here and do the Sokoban. And it's pretty easy. It's not, it's not too difficult. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, <laughs> why did I go? I had no reason to go down there. But I think one of the things that Temple No Key suffered with was the tedium. And it kind of killed the concept. Uh, yeah, now I go down here. <laughs> So I kind of reduced the tedium by just putting the block cloner right next to the teleport. And plus, the, the, the overall size of this level is is uh, also a huge benefit because Temple of No Key took up the entire map when it it really didn't need to. Okay. So I guess I can do this part later, but I'm just going to do it now just to get it out of the way. Pretty easy, Sokoban. Okay. So now I get these again? Oh yeah, you need them for the last chip. Okay, so this is open. That opens this up. That flips the tank, and that should be it. Okay. So now we have a major key remix section. Which you can mess up on, and that's the part of the, this was the part of the level I didn't think people would like. But it's pretty easy. Because you don't really get a whole lot of options. It's not until you get two keys is when you can start getting options. Okay, so... I have three of these. I can use two. And I have one. And I think I just grabbed that, because you need two yellows and a red to exit. Yeah, there we go. Alright, that's not too hard then. All right, human saturation done. Now on to insomnia. Ah, uh, yes, this this two tile wide silk bun trend. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of this in this section of the set. Okay. It was honestly pretty humorous to see JB struggle on this Sokoban. I do remember that he... It tripped him up. Actually, this whole level did. So this level went through a few different iterations. Um, the one that was in... Yeah, the one that was in Walls of CCLP3 that JB Let's Play, uh, that bottom section was not the way, it, the way it is here. I did change it. Okay, so we want to enter it from here, like that. Okay, this is just grunt work. that, push that there, and collect that, and now we just have this last, this last little 
section. This ball dodging can be a little, yeah, it can be a little mean, but you, you, you can be completely observant of this. Okay. So you go down here, and so here's the, here's the thing. So you can go in here and you can Bummer. try to exit. Well, the gap wasn't big enough, but there's like a gap that would make you think you can come here to exit, but you actually can't. And that's what I was going to show off, and I just killed myself by doing so. So now that now that I did that, now you know. <laughs> Because originally you had to like go through this, you had to go through like a dodging section with fireball cloners down there to uh, get the tank, the not tank button, uh, toggle button pressed to desync it, to desynchronize it or something like that. And I didn't really like that part of the level, so I I redesigned it. I like I like the way it it works now. So push that there. Push that there, there, there. Here and here. Yeah, so I think the last walls of CCLP3 level I submitted is like 197 or 198. Because this is how this is how the rest of the submission set is. So there's this section with walls of CCLP3. After that is the levels I chose out of trading places I submitted. And after that are like some nine by nine levels I made. That was part of an, an attempt with the beat with a it was a it was kind of the original plan with VT for a set collaboration was to make a, an entire level set just at, with 9x9 nine nine levels. Um, I'm sure it was possible, but just at the time it was pursued. Um, I just didn't have any... I didn't have any effort or ideas to really go through with it and it was early enough to just back away from it and I think I think that worked out for the best because now we have this walls of CC1 collaboration and that's definitely been a lot more interesting and exciting to work on than just a bunch of 9 by 9 levels because I mean Say what you will, but you can really only do so many things with in a nine by nine space without it being like, oh, you could have made this bigger or something like that. Hopefully this didn't lead you into manic depression. Indeed. Sometimes insomnia can do that to you to a, a guy. That's what walls it used, by the way. <laughs> All right, lethal gas hut, level 150. We haven't seen that number in a while. So this one uses uh, pearl diving and yeah, it's exactly as you see it. I, I didn't really have any strong ideas for pearl diving. I just, so like all this stuff here it was basically all scattered around. Like there was no, aside from you no know, some final, some finalization bits. Um, there was little to no uh, 
planning with this route. It was just, I just, I put fire everywhere to start with, and then I added ice in random spots, and I added blocks in random spots, and then I added bombs in other random spots, and I just threw in some chips and play tested it, see how it was played, and I liked the way it played out, so I kept it, and it made for this level. <laughs> That's the entire story behind this level. And I think the level name is an an is some anagram from CC1. I can go around, but I'm, I'd like to if I can't. Oh, maybe you can't actually. Can you? Oh no, you can. You can do. You can do something like this. Yeah, there you go. And we don't want to go through that. Let's just go through here. All right, that's it. Uh, the bottom left corner where the original toggle like the ball mechanism was that just has fire on it and honestly if this level gets into c shoppy 5 which i don't think it will um i'm probably just gonna opt to erase that section of the level because it's it's pointless <laughs> all right cap capium town yeah this level I, I really like this one. This is this is probably one of my favorites in Walls of CCLP3. Bummer. And we don't want to loop the loop the paramecia. That's a good meme. <clears throat> so this one uses floating plaza, and I know what you're thinking. Well. You already used Floating Plaza. You know, you had Runus Plaza in CCLP4. Well... Yeah, I do, but Runus Plaza doesn't... doesn't fully use floating plaza's wall layout. I mean, it uses bits and chunks of it, but it, it doesn't use the entire thing, so to actually make this was pretty satisfying and honestly a lot of fun. Boots Everywhere is, is a criminally underrated aesthetic. And now that I think about it, I don't think there's any walls of CC1 levels that have this that have this aesthetic like boots everywhere at least I don't think so I think I'm gonna get on that pretty soon okay so you want to push that out because you need to for to reach the end reach the exit Okay, so the Silkobon is pretty simple. Yeah, so you want to go through here. So the level name is a reference to I think a place in Super Mystery Dungeon. Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, that is. Also, this concept is really good. I don't care. If, if anyone's watching this that hates walkers, I know there's someone, a certain someone who probably is. Uh, you, can't, you can't deny that's a good walker usage. And if you disagree, I'm gonna, I'm willing to die on the hill for it. All right, Capium Town is done. Now onto a moon-shaped pool. 
Now this was definitely one of the first ones I made. I think this is like the fourth one. Third or fourth one I've made for C walls of CCLP3. And it's a pretty good one. It's a nice little level. It gets the concept across fairly well. It's not super trivial. And then there's a little bit of glider dodging you have to do. But this uses Blue Moon. That's not obvious enough. Uh, let's see, can I, yeah. Of the two playthroughs I've seen of this level, both, I believe both, both of them timed that glider horribly and almost got killed by it. And you can just, there is a fair way to dodge it and that, that is demonstrated here. So there you go. All right, exit exaggeration. I'm a little too proud of that, the pun reference. Okay, so you actually can't get the yellow key. So this is an this is an exit fake out level. Oh, and yeah, that's what happens if you you don't book it. All right. Okay. Oh, now I have the hiccups. So yeah, this uses entrance examination, and I turned an entrance level into an exit level because that's a that's a good idea. This little thing references exit to remember from earlier on, and you got this little thing. That obviously goes there. Actually, what am I? Oh, I'm getting the suction boots right. And I can already do that. Okay, so I have to partial post. Okay, so originally that those fire boots were hidden under a block, and I never, I never liked that. And upon JB's let's play of this, I. I changed it so the fire boots are visible and you still have to push the block. I originally didn't think there was a way to do it, but this works out the same pretty well. And what you have to do is you have to push the toggle button first because you're forced to push it there and then you just, you're forced to push it a, a, a third time by the block, which allows you to get all that good stuff. Honestly, for the, the tight space, I'm pretty happy with this little section. This really random corridor. And this this thing had a fairly minor b break in MS with uh, flicking a block that I managed to remove. Okay, so let's get the teeth up here. We'll get the block in place. And I'm gonna I'm actually gonna go ahead and go for a little secret that no one else has gone for. Because I think it's cool. I was actually surprised JB didn't go for it in his let's play, but I guess since it's a secret, it's not gonna be known about. Okay, so before we head out, let me get the teeth out. Have it follow me. And you don't have to do this, just for the record. This is not required. This is solely for the ending or for a secret hint. At least I think I think it is. Oh no, I messed it up. I was supposed to 
I was supposed to sit right there and the teeth would come on the slide and blow that up and I'd come back around and I would be able to push the block. This block has a hint under it and I butchered it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that sucks. Well, you know what? I want to show it off, so let's just replay the level. Screw it. Gives me a little extra time to talk, and I'm going to turn the volume down, because the volume is weirdly high for some reason. There we go. So... Bummer. Oh. So the yellow key was here just to make you think you have to collect it. Like, oh, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to reach the exits. So let's try to get the yellow key and you, you can't even collect that. But all in all, I'm pretty... I'm pretty happy with myself with this one. Um, I'm glad it got fairly positive uh, feedback. And um, yeah, I, I feel like for the most part, I use the space pretty well in this level. Um, it, that's not something I, I, I say a lot with walls of ccfp3 because there was a lot of templates that i definitely didn't do the best job with um others i excelled my own expectations with so basically the ones i submitted for ccfp5 or what i think are the best walls of CCP3 levels. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and set this block up up here. Okay, let's get you to follow me up here again. And I, I like the fact I made this, you know, you can just put the teeth right there so you don't actually have to deal with it while pushing this block around. Oh, and this section was is, is supposed to resemble a exit garden. Though, obviously, CC1 thin walls are not uh, universal like they are in CC2, so I had to improvise with the balls on the exits, which even that's a really fun aesthetic. Okay, let's well not mess up the hint this time. So let's just sit right here. The teeth will come here eventually. There we go. This spot would be too obvious. Hey, I got a faster time too. Not that I was trying for it, but hey, that, that works. Now, now the TWS will show off the hint. Very cool. All right, magnetic workout. Oh yeah, this level has a another fairly prime candidate for um, single spaced narrow hallways. This one uses Zelgon's Lair. And on it, so how this level started was with that blob on the ice in that corner right there. That, that was the very first thing I placed in this level. And somehow it led to being this. <laughs> Oh 
oh yeah, I can go ahead and provide some other updates go that have occurred. Um, so on Wednesday, um, I actually got, got back my, from. I actually heard back from my car insurance and um, I got my, uh, my payout from the car loss. And I got a lot, I got a lot more than I thought I would get out of it. Uh, and I, and I got a, a different car from it. And, uh, I got all that stuff taken care of that night and the day after, which was Thursday. So, I'm finally dead to a, the blob on ice there. <laughs> that was not good. So I basically finally have my life back. I have a, a very good used car. I no longer have a car payment, which was like the huge incentive behind this car accident. Or not incentive, that's probably not the best word to use. That was like the best Best case scenario. Does it? I'll, I'll tell you if having a car payment after a couple years that can be pretty. Uh, that can be pretty. That can, you can start feeling pretty hopeless. And I not that I felt stuck with the car or anything like that. It's just. Well, I guess in my case, I did kind of feel stuck with the car after a while. So that was one of the things that was like really causing my anxiety a couple years ago. Was trying to keep the car and everything. I love this blob on ice more than I should. Okay. There we go. Okay. So there's... Oh no, no there's not. I, I changed it. Because you used to, there used to be two different ways you can get the gliders up to those bombs up there. You could keep these yellow keys, but uh, I enforced a yellow. Why did I do that? I enforced a yellow key key lock or yellow door lock nail thingy, so you don't have these yellow keys. Man, I didn't push it down there. My freaking computer. <sighs> Over exaggerated the damn key press. Man. Bummer. Come on. So what I was getting at with the uh the whole car thing is um I basically now that I got the car and everything taken care of for it, I have quite, quite a, quite some chum change, I guess you can say, and um, most of what I have remaining is most is going to go to some some kind of savings or investing. But um, what I intend on doing with some of it is I'm going to get a desktop computer. Because I have not had the luxury to get one for well, basically my entire life. Like, like we've had some like well in the past when I was a kid, but I've never had one for myself. And I've always wanted to get one, but I've always 
I've always been stuck with laptops and just used to laptops. Like what I'm using to record this this right this minute is it's on a laptop. And um, it would be nice just to have a desktop computer where I can I can move these recordings on. I can possibly maybe do some streaming. I mean, I, I already do that, but I can actually do like Twitch streaming or something. Um, and just a, just a higher a higher grade PC where I can run. Some pretty solid games on it if I ever want to play them. This section's a little weird. But the main takeaway is you're supposed to avoid the chip because you're very clearly going to get flippers after, later or after this. And then to end it off, you have some fairly tight Force 4 timing stuff. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty tight, but it, it's in a small space, so it it works. Okay. Now we just have to dodge this and exit where you start or started in the original. So that's magnetic workout. It's a fun, it's a pretty fun level. It's, I don't know. I like some parts of it, other parts, not so much, but I didn't really know what to do with like that bottom section with the, um, the blocks with the water and where the gliders go. I didn't really know what to do with that, so I kind of just threw that away, and I guess that thin wall stuff was also kind of the same. Or the thin walls with the zigzagging with the uh, next to the blob on ice part. Other than that, I like everything else in this level, and from what I understand, it's it's well liked, so I guess that's what matters the most. Um... I think I'm going to stop for the night. Um, we'll take on th we'll do Thunder Wave Cave in the next video. And see where that takes us. Uh, some pretty solid progress though. I went from 143 to 155, and that includes replaying an entire level from start to finish. Just for a hint that anyone could have just looked at in the editor, but I wanted to showcase it on camera. So, yeah. So, with that being said, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, or if you didn't watch, or if you just listened, you know, thanks for listening in. I, I am trying to make a little bit of a stronger effort to be a little bit more vocally active in these videos, since I know some people just use this as like something to listen to when they're doing housework or something, um, which is good. I, I'm glad that my videos are, are worth that much to do during busy hours for other people. So that's really appreciated. Thank you. Um, and we'll continue on with Thunder Wave Cave. Thunder Wave Cave, which is another Pokemon reference. Probably my favorite one in this entire um, Walls of CCLP3 section. But we'll talk about that later. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day or evening or night, wherever the heck you are. Um, just have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Where's the stop record? Oh, there it is.